Hello, back again. It's Eric Backer, New Zealand naturopath. I'm going to continue on with my series on Helicobacter pylori. We're going to talk about how to test and diagnose Helicobacter pylori in this video. So there are basically three ways you can test for H. pylori. Probably four ways, I think, but uh, I think probably one of the most accurate ones is the UBT or the urea breath test, where um, it's very interesting. You basically have to stop for about 14 days prior to doing this test. You've got to stop antibiotics. Uh, you've got to stop any, any bismuth-containing preparations like Pepto-Bismol. You've got to stop any proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, any medications that block stomach acid. You stop all that kind of stuff for 14 days. Then you swallow a small amount of substance containing this stuff called urea. Now, urea is quite harmless because the body actually makes urea from when it breaks protein down. But what happens if you've got any HP present in the gut, in the stomach, they will convert the urea quite rapidly to carbon dioxide. Okay, because remember they convert this and then a gas gets produced and as a byproduct as well, uh, the urea gets converted by urease, an enzyme that this bacteria have. They convert the uh, urea, with urease, to alkaline substances to allow it to live. So they convert it to bicarbonate and uh, to ammonia and that's what allows it to live in the mucus of the environment you know that's that's acidic but the breath can be measured after a period of time for carbon dioxide if the carbon dioxide markedly goes up they know you've definitely got helicobacter i like this test because it's very it's very quick to determine if you've got it <clears throat> excuse me but in most places you can't get this test done anymore it's incredible I used to offer it here in new zealand all the time but all of a sudden it's just not available the blood test is only effective in, uh, in terms of measuring the antibodies. So Helicobacter, um, when it's present in the body, the immune system will attack it and produce antibodies. Now these antibodies can flow around in the bloodstream for a long, long, long time, even for years after. So there's no way of accurately measuring if you've got a current infection by doing a serum antigen test. The fecal test is a little bit more accurate and that it can de if, uh, determine if the treatment's been successful by showing a positive or negative. <clears throat> I'll often do uh, both of those tests with patients, but I can tell you now I've got no faith in, uh, very little faith in testing for helicobacter. I can't recall how many times I've had a patient where I was absolutely sure I had a gut feeling, pardon the pun, a gut feeling that they had this infection. Uh, and I got the testing done and it came back negative and then I treated the patient and they got a result This hasn't happened once not twice. I would say over a hundred times maybe 200 times This has happened where the treatment was a success, but the test was an abysmal failure So I like to have a positive test as a confirmation um, But I don't really rely on testing anymore for treatment of helicobacter. I just treat um, Unfortunately medical doctors can't do that. They have to diagnose uh, before they can treat and I believe in many cases this is just quite a dumb thing to do the uh, Doctor that taught me quite a lot of clinical skills regarding natural medicine a long long time ago said when you get experience It's best to treat Rather than you know to analyze every single thing and then treat after the analysis If it's going to do no harm to the patient you might as well just treat and see what the outcome is because a lot of your clinical experiences you know are based on what happens in the clinic so if you recurrently find that patients improve significantly, even if the test result is negative, I don't really care. I don't really care, to be honest. If the patient gets a favorable outcome, that's what I care about. So don't dismay if the tests come back negative for you. SIBO testing uh, is another test you can do to determine uh, you know, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And I believe it may also be partially effective for helicobacter. But as I mentioned in a previous video, in my opinion, there are many other bacteria that live in the stomach and the duodenum and other areas of the gut that have not yet really been detected as such. Uh, and I believe that people can develop many different signs and symptoms from infections that the medical system completely bypasses and just places patients on acid blocking medication you know, to cure the problem. They just put them on drugs and it's not really the way to go. So should you test or shouldn't you test? Well, that's up to you to decide, your doctor to decide. But if a test comes back negative and you really feel you've got helicobacter, then just treat and see what happens. And if the medical doctor says no, then you can always try the natural treatment first, as long as it's an effective natural treatment. And we'll talk about that in a subsequent video. 
Thanks for joining me in this video. We're going to do another video now on the risk factors. What are the risk factors if H. pylori is left untreated? Thanks for tuning in.